All right, everyone. Thank you very much for joining me once again. I'm your casting host, Beef. Welcome to this Beefcast production. Going to be bringing you some games out of the Assembly Summer 2012 round of 32. This is a group stage between these two players. Score is currently 2-1 in favor of our Terran player. Will our Red Protoss be able to bring it back to even? He is the Red Protoss over here. He is Quantic Sase. And in the bottom left-hand corner, following from 2-0 to 2-1, the blue Terran, he's going to be EG's Puma. So, Puma last game there on uh, Antigua Ship... Or, I always call Atlanta Spaceship Antigua Shipyard. I hate it. Why do I do that? I don't care. You need to call it Atlanta Space Bear anyway, because it looks like a bear, because that's awesome. But the blue Terran going to be falling there to a four-gate pressure from our uh, Protoss player. Really just falling victim to his own greed with that CC first built into two racks, and the two racks only going to be producing about six Marines before he drops uh, facilities at both of those and cancels production for the time being. Really just playing extremely greedy. Going to be going into upgrades, into factory, into all this, just really trying to ramp up for the later mid-game, and right there just not prepared for a four-gate. The 4-gate from our Protoss player was not a true 4-gate. He dropped a Nexus first, and so it was delayed by about uh, 50 seconds. Not Nothing too much right there, but some, sometimes that is all that you need uh, for your opponent to really just say, okay, well, okay, I, I guess there could be some pressure coming. There could be a bunker that I should drop right now, but Puma just playing completely greedy. Didn't even take that extra time to drop a second bunker, which could have saved him that game. So we'll see if Sase chooses to do something very similar here. Like all the other games, going to be going for a gateway first with an assimilator. The uh, gateway was before the assimilator this time. So maybe not the exact same build, but the cybernetic score going to be coming down. No Nexus first play this game. And even the second assimilator going to be coming down. The pros will start to rally into this Nexus right here as he starts to get his gas count up. Let's take a look in Puma's base. Going to be going for a CC first once again. Followed by that one barracks, and with the 150 coming up right here, there's going to be a second barracks. So, so far, going for the exact same build is our uh, Terran player. And so, let's go ahead and see how many probes he does sink into gas right here. And he's starting to bank Chrono Boost right now, so this could very well be the same build. Two Zealots in production right now for our Protoss player, and Warp Gate started with Chrono Boost. So this, once again, could be the exact same build from both of our players here on Metropolis. This map is uh, very large once again, but these players are in close positions or close by air, close by... Oh, well, they're, they're, they're kind of close positions. I don't even know what you call that on this map. But here's the first deviation. A third barracks is going to be going down for Puma. So with this, he's going to be able to produce a few more infantry units, and that might just be all that he needs to go ahead and thwart off any kind of early aggression. But the Nexus is actually going to be popped down by Sase. Very same build that he did last time. And so we'll see if he does, in fact, choose to plop down three additional gateways and put some more pressure on to his opponent. Sentry's going to be in production just like last game as well. And with that one probe going to be moving across the map, the SCV does spot where the units are coming from. And Zealot's even going to be falling back for the time being. The Sentry going to be trying to deny any kind of scouting on that Nexus. Let's take a look. He did not get to see that Nexus, so nice job of positioning there. Without the knowledge of that Nexus being down, there could be a hard 4-gate coming, and he would never know. But it looks like this time, instead going to opt for the 3-gate pressure, a, a more popular build than that 4-gate for sure. But with those 3 racks already up, one bunker going to be up, and that SCV going to be tucked away over here. Probably going to be looking for a scout in the next minute or so, but with that uh, probe, the couple zealots at his front door, Puma might even opt to throw down another bunker just to be safe. But knowing that he drove those units away for at least the time being, might even just say, okay, I'm, I'm probably going to be okay. But no, there's there's the second bunker, so Puma is absolutely going to be able to hold off any kind of 3 gate aggression right now, but the robo facility is going to be going down, so... If uh, Puma did, in fact, choose to go something like a little bit of an Immortal push, the Immortals can be very effective at dealing with those couple bunkers. But by the time the Immortal does make its way across the map, not able to be warped in, uh, there might be a little bit too much defense from our Terran player, who is going to be ramping up here in the very near future. With one tech lab out, going to be starting Marauder production right there, and Marines going to be coming out of the other two, not choosing to drop down reactors right now, wants to make sure he's safe against this pressure. The uh, Terran player does, in fact, see this one stalker here. Not sure if he saw the rest of those units, 
but the SUV is going to be making its way into the main base right now and looking like it's going to get an absolutely beautiful scout. Sees the Nexus down. He saw how many probes were down there. He sees the three gates. He sees the robo facility and an immortal being chrono boosted out right now from that facility. So it looks like uh, Sase is going to be looking right now to do a little bit of pressure with that immortal. Once I, again, I said immortals are going to be extremely effective at dealing with these bunkers going to be able to kill them in just as little as about six seven hits something like that and with the pressure from all the other units as well this could be a little bit hard for puma to deal with especially since he just dropped those tech lab and the reactor so that's going to cancel out production on this one for about 50 seconds and about losing about two marines worth of uh, production or one marauder worth production over here on this barracks as well even choosing to go up into his engineering bay and his starport. So Sase reading this beautifully once again, catching the opponent both times when he's trying to tech up. And that immortal is going to be making its way over here. Second immortal continuing to be chrono boosted out right now. Still only working off those three gates and probing up behind this, but an additional uh, three more gateways going up to six gate robo. This is going to be a very heavy pressure build. And if this does in fact end up uh, attacking right here within about the next... Mm, minute and 20 seconds puma is going to have a very very hard time dealing with this probably going to wait until those three gateways do indeed come up not quite sure if he has the economy to support this right now only working off of 31 probes i actually don't think he has the economy to support six gates and a robo he might cut the uh ro yeah there we go he has cut robo production so six gates off of 31 probes yeah he should be able to work with that uh but no, he can't use the Robo. So with all these Marines and Marauders over here, and the Missile Turret going to be coming down, wants to be able to spot for anything, but one SCV going to be going ahead and charging on out right there. We'll see how good the Force Fields are, and the Force Fields are actually beautiful. The Immortals back here are going to be able to put a lot of damage into these bunkers. The uh, Zealot's going to be able to take out anything in the front line up here, and the Immortals just going to be trying to pound in from the back right now, but Stim is not complete. Stim's going to be done here in about three more seconds, but a lot of the army has fallen. Only nine Marines and three Marauders. SCVs being forced to pull from every which direction the uh, orbital command even being forced to lift the force field is absolutely able to do a ton of work the first immortal does in fact fall but a nice force field going to block the majority of the units right there and almost every single one of the combat units for puma is dead and there is still so much left here for sase the observer going to be sniped there by the missile turret so the missile turret at least doing a little bit of work but stim coming out right now with the remainder of the SCVs and another beautiful force field going to block the rest of that ramp, making sure that no more units are coming into the battlefield. And GG comes out from Puma. So once again, a absolutely beautifully executed timing there from our protest player. Brings the series back up to 2-2. A very nice job there from Sase. Looking forward to this game five. See who takes home the series. And look at that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful games. Let's see if Puma wants to play a little bit less greedy next time. Or if Sansei is going to be able to just make it a clean sweep there with three games in a row. Once again, I've been your uh, casting host, Beef. This is a Beef Cast production, bringing you games out of Assembly Summer 2012. We're going to go into Game 5 of this Best of 5 series and see who can bring it home. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you